What's up guys, Ghost here, and today I've got some tips on playing the Assault or Medic class in Battlefield 4. So in this video, I'm going to be covering the best weapons for the Assault class, what sort of weapons and gadgets I like to run with, and also some general gameplay tips. So the first and most important tip is to know your role. Your role as an Assault player is to be the front lines of the infantry. You're going to be extremely potent against enemy infantry, and you're also going to be great at keeping your team alive, resurrecting them, and that sort of thing. But you're not going to be good against enemy vehicles. You really don't have any kind of gadget that can do anything against it, save the M320 grenade launcher, and even that won't do a whole lot. You're better off just saving your ammo. So with that said, you really want to pick the Assault class on a map that's going to lend itself to the Assault class's playstyle. So on Domination, maps where there are a lot of infantry but not too many vehicles is where the Assault class is really going to shine. A map, for example, like Gullmold Railway, on the other hand, has lots of enemy armour, lots of enemy aircraft, and it is a huge map, so you're going to be in a lot of long-range engagements. So the Assault class may not be the most favourable in that situation. So let's talk about healing and reviving. You will get two different gadgets as the assault class, the med kits and the med packs. You start off with the med kits and these are somewhat different from med packs, but both have their advantages. You throw one on the floor and anybody can pick it up yourself or an allied player and it will give you 20 health per second until you take damage. So as soon as you take damage, the healing effect will stop. But the bonus is that you can actually run around with these things anywhere you like, and as long as you don't take damage, you will be continually healed up to 100%. Now, later on down the unlock tree for the Assault class, you will actually get the Medic Bag, which is the good old gadget from Battlefield 3, if you've played that before. You throw this down on the floor, and it will heal everybody around you at a constant rate. Now, the drawback to this thing is that you have to be in a close vicinity to it. You can't just throw it down and pick it up like you can a med pack and then go running off towards the enemy. So it's really sort of something to hold down the front lines, um, heal up your allies, heal up yourself. But one bonus for this is that even if you take damage, it will continue to heal you. So say you're behind a wall or a little corner, you're shooting at enemies, throw down a med pack there. And even if you take damage, you can then dart behind the wall, start healing process, and then you can lean back out. And even if you take damage, you're still going to be healed. And of course, the fact that it will heal anyone within the vicinity of it and if you really want to score some points in battlefield and level up fast this is one of the best ways to do that so with that said let's talk a little bit about the defibrillators this will be the first gadget that you unlock as the assault class and it's seen some significant changes since battlefield 3 so the way this works is that you'll have two or three uses of this thing and you can only resurrect somebody once i believe once you've resurrected them if they die again you can't immediately resurrect them until a certain amount of time has passed now there are two different ways to res people you can instantly res them by just clicking the defibrillator but that will only bring them back at 20 percent health and as a result you will only actually get 20 points or you can hold down the left click button or the trigger on your controller and you can charge the paddles up the more you charge them up the higher health the ally will be brought back to life on and the more points you will get as a result now the downside to this is that while you're charging up the paddles you can't sprint and this is a big deal so you really have to get good at knowing when to do a quick res and when you're able to charge up the paddles obviously if there's nobody around to shoot at you you can afford to charge up your paddles as you walk over to the enemy and try and resurrect him at full health. But you also have to bear in mind how long that person has to be resurrected. The res icon will only be above an ally's head a certain amount of seconds and then it will disappear. And if you don't know how long he's been there, you're perhaps better off doing a quick res to make sure you actually get that res in. Because there's nothing more annoying than charging your paddles up to 100% and then the res icon disappears and you're too late to res the guy. Also, if you're in an intense firefight, you're peeking around the corner, there's bullets flying your way, and a guy dies just around the corner, you want to be able to pop around the corner and give him a quick res. Don't run over to him really slow, charging the panels, and die yourself. And that also brings me to another point. You have to know when to resurrect at all. Even though there's somebody dead next to you on the floor, resurrecting him isn't always the best course of action. If it's going to mean that you're going to die in the process, there really isn't any point in doing it at all. And I see so many players do this all the time. They'll just be like, oh, look, somebody dead on the floor. Three points. Woohoo. And they'll just run out and go and resurrect the die. And they'll end up dying as a result. So you have to really get good at gauging the situation. There are a number of other different gadgets and attachments for the Assault class, and most of these 
are grenade or shotgun under barrel attachments. So the most popular of these is probably the M320 high explosive grenade launcher. And while this will do a considerable amount of damage against enemy infantry, it really isn't worth using it against vehicles. Back in the beta, it actually did a significant amount of damage to enemy armor, but in light of that, they saw that it was too powerful, they nerfed it, and now it really isn't worth wasting your ammunition on that. Now for me, whilst it will do a lot of damage against infantry, I don't really need it when I have grenades. I would much rather go with the security that a med pack or a med kit brings. But that said, it does have its uses. You will get certain situations where there'll be a bunch of guys clustered up in a building or in a window and you can just shoot that grenade in there and kill a bunch of them. And of course there will be situations where I feel like I don't need to run with the med bags. If I'm running with a squad of guys and we're talking on live comms and I know that they're running assault and they've got med bags and they're going to provide healing for us, it's not really necessary for me to run with a medic bag. But generally speaking, if I'm playing in a public game and I don't know if I I can really uh, rely on my squad mates or not to provide that healing, I will just go with the safe bet of a med pack or medic bag. Now some of the other grenade types that I've found extremely useful is the smoke grenade. Now you can actually equip these as normal grenades as well as an underbarrel launcher attachment and these are especially good in rush and obliteration, especially when you're going to arm the MCOM or the bomb. In obliteration it can really provide some nice cover and stop people from spotting you. So with the gadgets looked at, let's take a look at some of the best weapons. You're going to start off with the AK-12, and this is a pretty easy to use assault rifle. It has fairly low recoil and a fairly average rate of fire, so it's not going to be an absolute beast up close and personal, but it certainly is easy to manage. The first unlock you're going to get is the SCAR-H, and this weapon may actually scare you somewhat. It has extremely high recoil, and it only has 20 rounds in a magazine, so it may appear at first sight that it's a pretty bad weapon. Now where it shines is that it actually has a max damage of 34 and it's actually the only assault rifle to have that damage model. The rest of them only do a max damage of 25 so that's where the compensation is. However that said it really is a little bit of a niche weapon and it's definitely hard to use. I'm kind of surprised that they put this in the game as the first assault rifle unlock because new players are definitely going to find this one hard to use. Personally, I stuck with the AK-12 until I unlocked the third weapon, which is the M416, and this one is an absolute beast. It has a higher rate of fire than the AK-12, a little bit more recoil, but it really just doesn't fail at any range. Next up, we have the SAR-21. This is quite similar to the M416 once again, slightly lower rate of fire, but it will really outperform the M416 at some of those longer ranges. The fifth weapon you'll unlock is the AEK-971 and this thing will tear up anyone from close to medium range. It has 900 rounds per minute but it does have considerable recoil to control. So this is definitely a weapon that you can get used to controlling the recoil. You can of course use a muzzle attachment to reduce the vertical recoil somewhat but I still wouldn't recommend trying to use this weapon in long range situations. And finally we have the FAMAS, the sixth weapon you're going to unlock and the last weapon I'm going to talk about today. And this is actually the gun with the highest rate of fire I believe in the entire game. It has a thousand rounds per minute but only 25 rounds in a magazine. So do beware, it will take people down in a matter of seconds at close range. But it has quite a lot of recoil, side to side recoil especially and can be hard to keep on target at long ranges and even medium ranges to be honest. It also only has 25 rounds in a magazine which means you're going to chew through that entire magazine in a matter of seconds. And of course further down the line you will end up unlocking more weapons. There's one unlock via an assignment which is the ACE 23 and I recently made a gun guide video on that which is a series where I look at a certain weapon more in depth so if you want to go and check that out I'll link it in the description down below. I'm not going to tell you guys all the weapons now because I don't want to bore you but of course there are the leaked ones from the China Rising expansion pack that weren't really supposed to come out yet so um, go and check those out if you're interested in knowing more. So we've talked about weapons, we've talked about gadgets, and now I'm going to go finally over some of the field upgrade paths. Now the field upgrade path that you start off with is the defensive one, and it is probably one of the worst in my opinion for the assault class, because playing assault is not a defensive role. You're going to be offensive, you're going to be getting into the objective and taking it, because you have one of the most high powered weapons in the game. 
Now the offensive path is a great choice once you unlock that and mainly because at the second level you're going to get the ammo upgrade and don't underestimate this guys once you start going on kill streaks and getting good at the game you're going to find that you only have three or four clips for your primary weapon you're going to be out of ammo before you even know it and you're going to be having to search around for a support player and it's really annoying when you're out of ammo all you have is your secondary and then you came face to face with three guys and you get completely owned because you only have a pistol to fight back with. So having that ammo upgrade is great. Also at level 1 you get sprint and running faster is always nice. At level 3 you get an extra grenade and at level 4 you get reduced fall which isn't all that great to be honest. Now my other favourite tree is the combat medic tree. This is really for those of you out there who are team players you want to do your maximum healing to your your uh, allies and it's also amazing for scoring points. At level 1 this is the first level, so as soon as you put on the field upgrade tree, you will get the ability which allows you to put down two med bags at once. And this is amazing for scoring points and for healing up your team. Level 2 you get sprint, level 3 you're able to heal people when you're inside of a vehicle, and at level 4 you get the defib upgrade, which reduces the amount of time it takes for you to charge up your defibrillator. There is also a Grenadier upgrade tree, but as I mentioned before, I don't really often like running with the M320 grenade launcher, but for those of you out there who do, you might want to take a look at this. It's essentially going to give you more 40mm grenades for your grenade launcher and more regular grenades that you can carry. So there you go guys, those were a few tips on playing the Assault class, including loadouts and how you can best help out your team. I hope those helped if you're a new player and you're finding the Battlefield franchise difficult to acclimatise to. Be sure to subscribe for more tips and tricks in the future. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.